the costs on the continent to trade with the outside and among ourselves, they're too high. Trading with the outside, our costs are equivalent to a tariff of 350%, which is one and a half times larger than what you find in developed countries. 350%, so you're putting a cost that large on top of, because of all the barriers. That's what trading with the outside. Trading among ourselves is even worse. The barriers to trade within Africa are harder and higher than the ones. It's equivalent to a 435% tariff. So unless we can deal with these costs and bringing them down, we will, it will be very difficult for us to actualize a good implementation of the continental free trade areas. So Hello guys and welcome back to this channel. I'm your host Idi Kanobot and this is Isaac Anus. So we have something very fresh and something very exciting to bring us once again on this channel. But this is concerning African continent as a whole. So we all as Pan-Africanists who are hoping and striving and desiring to see the rise of the African continent. These are the kinds of things we are happy to see and we are also praying and hope, hoping that they will see the light of day and they will be, they will be more and more integrated into the everyday activity that goes on in in traditional trade between our neighboring countries in africa so what today's video about is about a Frexim bank and the move to domesticate the intra-african payment system so a Frexim bank as we speak right now is trying to set up a kind of pan-african payment system that would help to facilitate trade between african countries within the continent now as we speak trade between africa that is tr regional trade between africa is very low is very very low more Af many african countries will rather prefer to trade with europe with asia with north america you know with south america than to trade within themselves because of the many bottlenecks and the bureaucratic processes involved in intra trade within ourselves and the major inhibiting factor is the lack of a single unifying currency in the continent. Now, it's a big thing to try to set up a single currency that can operate in the African continent. But if that can be achieved, then that will be mind-boggling and will definitely be very revolutionary for the African continent to rise from its current state to begin to compete with the global north. So this are some of the things that have made the Afrexim Bank. Now, Afrexim Bank stands for African Export Import Bank. They're a bank that, you know, tries to finance a lot of, you know, um, payment system, a lot of support to exportation and importation, basically trade not just within Africa, but even outside Africa, okay? So, now, Afrexim Bank have noticed that Africa loses about $5 billion a year just to trade amongst itself intra-regional trade because most of the intra-regional trade that goes on between african countries is carried out in the dollar currency exchange from maybe naira to the dollar and back to the cd in terms of maybe trade between nigeria and ghana and all these different currency exchanges different multiple exchanges within the continent makes us lose five billion dollars that's crazy illegal amount of money that is lost because of a very clogged and impeded bottleneck financial payment system that we are using right now in the continent so there's a need for a robust you know a legal framework and infrastructure framework and even legislative framework that can help for trade within the continent because a typical trader will not want to trade a typical Nigerian will not want to trade with ghana because of the of the hindrances it would take him to, will I say, trade with Ghana. Let me explain why this is the case. Let's say right now I'm, I'm, I'm a Nigerian farmer and I export, um, let's say, um, cassava flour, okay? And maybe Ghana is in high need of cassava flour and I export cassava flour from Nigeria. Now, typically, now I, I, I don't want to use Ghanaian cities, maybe because all I do is export. Most of the things I import, I don't import them from Ghana, I import them maybe from China or from US. So what I want is dollar. So I want to sell this my cassava flour to Ghana and get dollar from Ghana. 
so i can use this dollar to then go ahead to buy you know infrastructural machineries from china from europe in order to enhance my productivity in my cassava flour making but then this my ghanaian counterpart who wants my cassava flour does not have dollar or is finding it very difficult to source dollar to give me but he readily has cd and i ask myself if i sell this my flour cassava flour and i get cds what will i use cds to do because last time i checked i don't need these cds because i don't have any personal thing i want to go and buy from ghana that require cds people who may not suffer a lot of these issues are people who do trade between these two countries so maybe let's say for example now maybe ghana has a lot of um, cocoa and i maybe have a cocoa maybe i have a cocoa um, let's say factory that can change this cocoa beans in order to, to cook sorry i have a factory that can change the cocoa to chocolate maybe it's a semi-processed form of chocolate which i can then ship abroad and then extra flavors can be added in the different countries abroad to make the different flavor of chocolate that they desire so i can export sorry import cocoa from ghana and then use it in nigeria make the chocolate beets and then maybe export to europe and maybe i also have cassava flour so this is what's going to happen i'm going to sell my cassava flour to ghana get ghanaian cds then when i want to import their cocoa i'll take the cds that i got from exporting the flour and i'll now take that ghanaian cds and then pay to get ghanaian cocoa so i can then form chocolate and then ship it to europe and get dollar now only companies or organizations who have bilateral trade between themselves can afford to trade in the different currencies but then when they suffer a trade deficit the dollar has to come to the rescue this is the issue that is being faced now the pan-african um, banking system that the african bank is trying to set up is trying to remove the need for dependence on the dollar we're not trying to we're not trying to like say overthrow or uh, run throw away the dollar it's not possible right now or the euro or the pound or the franc it's not possible but trying to reduce our dependence on foreign currencies and to see how to increase and to push regional trade amongst ourselves that's why we, are, we um they are coming up with what they call paps p-a-p-s-s the pan-african payment settlement system this is trying is, is not gonna is the aim is to help us to trade amongst ourselves without having to have issues with um currency changes and currency interference now let me explain a, a, a something i also read from an article about uba bank now uba bank was is, is a case of the um, uba access bank and some other big multinational banks as i'm a nigerian so i can i can speak for what nigeria is doing will i say in the west african um climb now because uba bank is present in every west african countries and they are doing trade within those countries so let us say that a Ghanaian person now a Ghanaian person may not be able to source dollar but because UBA is in Nigeria and is in Ghana he can source naira so maybe let us um he wants to i want to sell my flour cassava flour to this my brother in Ghana what will he do he will take his Ghanaian cities and go to UBA bank and deposit it in the bank and ask uba for naira because uba has its headquarters in nigeria it is very easy for them to always have naira so our Ghanaian brother can go to the bank and give his cities and collect naira and send that naira to me and collect my flour so that i can then have naira although it may not be as favorable as having dollar because i have some things i want to buy in dollar but then the currency that i now have in my pocket is useful to me and I can use it to carry out my everyday activities and run my organizations in my country. When I want to buy my um, um, cocoa from Ghana, I can then take this my money because UBA has a branch in Ghana. I can then take Naira to UBA and say, UBA, I need so and so amount of Ghanaian cities. So look at the equivalent in Naira, collect. UBA will then collect that money in Naira and give me cities. And I can now pay my Ghanaian brother Ghanaian cities and collect his cocoa. Okay, so this is part of what the Afrasian Bank is trying to do. It is trying to, you know, form up a system where instead of seeking dollar, you can go to the Afrasian Bank and deposit your own country's currency and get the currency you want to trade with. So let us say I want to trade with Zambia right now. I can go and deposit Naira with the Afrasian Bank and collect the Zambian kwacha. 
and buy what I want to buy from Zambia. And when Zambia wants something from Nigeria, they will carry their, their money from um, to a phrasing bank and get Naira and buy what they need from Nigerians. In this process, we are going to eliminate the need for dollar, for euro and francs while doing inter-regional trade. So that we can trade more. And you understand that when you trade more with your currency, your own indigenous currency, it makes your economy to grow and it strengthens the value of your currency. But when you trade more with another person's currency, when you trade more with the dollar, with the euro, with the francs, with pounds, with sterling, you strengthen your own currency because you're using it to trade on a regular basis. Now, this is what a Frexing Bank is trying to do. And in the process, their aim is to save the continent $5 billion on a yearly basis. So in two years, we, we lose $10 billion. In three years, $15 billion. In four years, twenty billion. Do you know what twenty billion can do for any country in Africa right now? Some countries, their debt is probably thirty or forty billion dollars. That's their whole national debt, and that's the amount of money that we can lose in about four to five years, just because of trading amongst ourselves. Because of this particular issue, many countries have been trading with other countries outside Africa. In order to get the green back, the dollar, or the euro, or the francs, or the pound, or the sterling. Because it will be easier and more profitable to their economy than to go ahead to lose a lot of money in trying to trade with your own African counterpart. So this is huge for the African clan. This is huge for the financial system within the African continent. If the African continent can set up a single currency that is backed by the natural resources domiciled and deposited in our soil, then it would be fantastic and very, it would be revolutionary. But in the case where that cannot be implemented because of maybe a um, lash back or fight back from Europe or from America, or from China or from wherever, then we can go ahead to set up a very robust intra-African payment system that can help payments to be sustained within the continent. So this is where we're going to end it for today's video. Thank you for sticking this long with us. Very grateful. We're very happy. And we see you again. Remember to like, to share, to comment, and please turn on the notification bell. I found that a lot of us had, have, have not tuned into what is going on because we don't get notified. You can turn on your, your notification bell and select all videos so you can get updated with the amazing things happening in our continent and our year continent, Nigeria. And until you see again, Godspeed.